Mark 13, 32 through 33 says, however, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Only the father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard, stay alert. See, we live in this world with two clocks that really matter. Our individual clock, when God will take his breath back from us and the end of the world clock, when God will say he will no longer listen to Jesus intercede for us, then God will send Jesus back to judge the earth. Many, or should I say most people live their best lives, not God's best life for them, and have altered God's standards of living and have attempted to alter the word of God to fit their lifestyle. Mark 13, 30 through 31 says, I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my word will never disappear. This is a magnum amazing day the Lord has blessed us with. God has showered us with his tender mercies and given us an opportunity to turn from the darkness of sin to God's glorious light through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Many people will not wake up today and many others' individual clocks will expire. We must rejoice and be glad and give God the glory for today. Today is Sunday, 9 8 20, 24. And as I was doing my evening and morning devotion, what came to me was God's clock. As this short video with love from the Lord's word is delivered, I pray that the spirit of the living God will give us an unquenchable desire to seek, know, trust, and follow Jesus wholeheartedly for the good and will of God's kingdom with an unshakable faith and obedience according to the word of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit leads us, guides us, gives us wisdom, and uses me as a vessel to help prepare others for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit that guides me, my faith and obedience in the word of God, that my thoughts, words, and actions will produce good fruit, giving God the glory as I'm used to share the good news and that many will come to Jesus for the salvation of their souls. I'm talking about God's clock. Second Peter 3, 8 through 9 says, but you must not forget this one thing. Dear friends, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about this promise as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sakes. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Let me say it again. One day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like one day. Go and look it up. Since God created the world, it's been 6,000 years. So let's get started with God's clock. Colossians 2, 16 through 17 says, So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink, or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. Stay focused. I'm talking about God's clock. See, God's clock can be illustrated through the feast days in the Old Testament with each day being one day of the week. I'm on God's clock. Stay focused. See, you have to understand celebrating certain days relates to holy days like new moon ceremonies or weekly Sabbaths during these feast days. 
But what's most important is that we understand the Bible, the book of instruction, is the only book that foreshadows the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's clock started with the Passover, Exodus 12, 21 through 23, which says, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go, pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and sides of your door frames of your houses. And no one may go out through the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the door frame, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. See, Jesus is the Passover lamb that was sacrificed for our sins, the sins of this world. Jesus was spotless and without sin, and he had no broken bones. Stay focused, because we are talking about God's clock. John 19, 31 through 34 says, It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, a very special Sabbath because it was Passover week. So they asked Pilate to hasten the deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Their bodies could not be taken down. Their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when Jesus, but when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water flowed out. See, when Jesus was crucified for our sins, that was day number one. His legs was not broken. If you go back and look at one of the requirements of the Passover lamb, they could not break any bones of that animal while it was being cooked, while it was being sacrificed. Jesus is our Passover lamb and his bones were not broken when he died on the cross for our sins. Again, the Passover was day number one. And when Jesus was crucified on the cross for us, day number one began. I'm talking about God's clock. And since Jesus was crucified, since that time, we have been living in the last days, waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, day one of God's clock. Day two is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Stay focused. This is God's clock. Exodus 12, 18 through 20 says, The bread you eat must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day of the first month until the evening of the 21st day of that month. During those seven days, there must be no trace of yeast in your homes. Anyone who eats anything made with yeast during that week will be cut off from the community of Israel. These regulations apply both to the foreigners living among you and the native born Israelites. During those days, you must not eat anything made with yeast. Wherever you live, eat only bread made without yeast. See, the Feast of Unleavened Bread was the foreshadow suffering for Jesus by removing the sin, the yeast, from our lives. When you pick up your cross daily and suffer for Jesus, showing love to someone who is mistreating you instead of mistreating them back, you are eating this bread without yeast. When you afflict yourself and not give yourself self-gratification seeking personal pleasures, smoking, drinking, sexual immorality, adultery, 
when you obey all of God's commandments, instructions, requirements, and regulations, you're eating that unleavened bread. Stay focused. This is God's clock. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8 says, Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let's not celebrate the festival, not with old bread of wickedness and evil, but with new bread but with new bread of sincerity and truth. See, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, so we don't have to celebrate these feasts and festivals any longer. Jesus is our daily bread, and we must eat the word of God daily and suffer the way Jesus did when he took our sins and died on the cross. When you claim Jesus, you no longer engage in willful sin. You no longer do things that encourage willful sin. I'm talking about eating unleavened bread. Day number two, God's clock. Day three is the feast of harvest or the feast of first, first, first fruits. And day number four is feast of weeks or feast of Pentecost. These feasts run together. In our time, this is like getting baptized and producing good fruit from the Holy Spirit. Stay focused. This is God's clock. Leviticus 23, 15 through 17 says, From the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Keep counting until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days later. Then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. Make these loaves from four quarts of choice flour and bake them with yeast. They will be an offering to the Lord from the first of your crops. Let me show you the first fruits that was harvested in God's clock. Matthew 27, 50 through 53 says, Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple of and in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the sanctuary after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many. See, some of our ancestors who were dead before Jesus were lifted up as a part of the first fruits the first to be harvested after Jesus was crucified on the cross. I'm talking about God's clock. See, Acts 2, 1 through 4 says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames of fire or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. See, this receiving of the Holy Spirit was the end of the Feast of Weeks, also known as the Feast of Pentecost. Stay focused. We're on God's clock and heading to Day number five, the Feast of Trumpets. Numbers 10, 9 through 10 says, When you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies who attack you, sound the alarm 
with trumpets. Then the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness too, sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month and blow your trumpets over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpet will remind your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. See, the trumpet is a warning. And since Jesus, we have had many trumpets in the form of prophets and apostles, but none greater than John the Baptist, who cleared the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, all who accurately preach and teach the word of God from the Bible are blowing the trumpet as a warning that Jesus is coming back. Luke 1, 13 through 17 says, But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord, their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. See, we're talking about God's clocks. See, the trumpets have been blowing. Have you found refuge in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Many are talking the Christian life. However, most are not living it. Let's take refuge in Jesus while we still have time, while the light of day is still among us. We are talking about God's clock and headed to day number six. The Day of Atonement, 6,000 years since the creation of the world and the feast day we are currently on. We are living in the Day of Atonement. Stay focused on God's clock. Leviticus 23, 27 through 29 says, Be careful to celebrate the Day of Atonement on the 10th day of that same month Nine days after the Festival of Trumpets, you must observe it as an official day for a holy assembly, a day to deny yourselves and present special gifts to the Lord. Do no work during that entire day because it is the Day of Atonement when offering of purification are made for you, making you right with the Lord your God. And all who do not deny themselves that day will be cut off from God's people. Are you purifying and cleansing yourself of all sins? Are you denying yourself of any personal pleasures to give God the glory? This is God's clock, the day of atonement, the day we are currently living. Hebrews 7, 23 through 26 says there were many priests under the old system for death prevented them from remaining in office but because Jesus lives forever his priesthood lasts forever therefore he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him he lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf he is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and he had, and he has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. I'm talking about God's clock to this present day. This is where Jesus, our Lord and Savior, sits and intercedes as high priest for us. For all people who have lived since him and who are currently walking among this earth, interceding, sitting at the right hand of God. There is no other God, Jesus, who is also the high priest 
who can do what Jesus will do for you when you come to him and he is able to carry the sins that you once bared. When you live to follow Jesus and give God the glory, I'm talking about God's clock. Today is the day for your salvation to come to Jesus and have your sins atoned for. Because if you are left holding your sins when atonement is over, you will be cut off from God's people. You will not get to enter into heaven. When all who are saved gather for the Feast of Tabernacles, I'm talking day number seven, the day of completion on God's clock. Come to Jesus today. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the light and savior of the world, as well as our high priest interceding for us at the right hand of God day and night. Jesus is the open door, the gate, and the good shepherd of all God's flock. We must follow Acts 2, 38 through 39, which says, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. I'm talking about God's clock, where we currently sit, day number six, with Jesus as our Lord and Savior, interceding on our behalf. Time is running out, and since you don't know, since we don't know, when God will take our breath or tell Jesus, that's enough, no more interceding is available. Go and get my people. We must repent of our sins, turn to God, come to Jesus today, for the salvation of your soul. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm talking about God's clock. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I pray that you have a better understanding of God's clock and that you will meditate on God's word day and night. Meditate on the word of God day and night with prayer, supplication, and fasting, seeking wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and a deeper truth of God's word. Have a magna amazing day and leave a legacy doing legendary things, seeking and loving God first through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in all areas of your life and making a commitment to live by the word of God through faith and obedience. I'm talking about God's clock. Our purpose is your blessing. God bless.